Intel Arrow Lake desktop CPUs with up to 40 cores and 40% higher ST performance, single thread performance, Panther Lake and Beast Lake with higher multi-thread and more P cores. 40 Whee! cores soon. Yeah. Hmm. So scroll down so they can see the... Um... I just want to pause and let everybody absorb that for a minute. How does that make a 6-core, 12-thread, 7600X look? Buy Windows 10 Professional for $15, activate instantly online with Microsoft, and keep it forever. Don't pay full price. Get the best deal from our sponsor, URCD Keys, using our link in the video description below. Full details on how this amazing deal works at the end of the video. Pretty dumb. I mean... I got 40 cores. I got 6 cores. <laughs> One is not like the other. So. Cougar Cove and Beast Lake with more P cores. Panther Lake. Okay, Panther Lake with Cougar Cove and Beast Lake with more P cores. But so. that's not what's really interesting about this. As I scroll down, uh, there's a lot of details on this that may or may not come true because. Well, it's, it's a guess. It's. Yeah, but CPUs typically have a five-year lead time. Mm. Fun fact. Bulldozer FX yes. launched in 2012. Yep. The day after it launched, Ryzen started development. Mm -hmm. It launched in 2017. Ryzen took five years from beginning of development to retail sales. Yep. What you're buying today started development years ago. So 2026 or 2027 chips are not just like, well, we have an idea of something we'll make. That Almost stuff's already that, in development. That started in 2021. It takes years to develop the stuff. Mm -hmm. when, in, when Intel decided to go hard on core count, the funny thing is during the 2010s, they languished on core count. Four yeah, cores, eight did. threads, four cores, eight threads, four cores, they, eight threads, four cores, eight threads. They, they cores, eight just threads. dilly-dallied. So then they decided to overcompensate the other direction and say, you want cores? You can't handle the cores. We will give you all the cores. So there's a bunch of details here, but that's not really readable at this scale. So we're going to scroll this down and... I9, 832. That's not what's impressive. What's impressive? Here. So four cores, eight threads, four cores, eight threads, four cores, eight threads, four cores... Oh, gee, this is freaking ridiculous. This is why Intel became a joke for yep. a long time. Mm -hmm. I know. It's that whole 10 year. Then they went to six. Yep. Then they went to eight. And they just kept giving us these little baby steps. Oh, fine, we'll give you a little more. Fine, we'll give you a little more. Fine, yep. we'll give you a little more. Yep. And then we got Comet Lake with 10 cores. That's I9-10900K. Mm -hmm. And then we went to Rocket Lake where they went back to yeah, eight they cores. Went back to, so yeah. Really? Rocket Lake. Okay. I remember that. But it's all they could do because it was 14 nanometer backported to, or it was 10 nanometer backported to 14 nanometer. Alder and Lake went to 16, 16 cores. 20. Raptor Lake went to 24 cores. Yep. Last year. Raptor Lake refresh coming out this year. That'll be 14th gen. Again, 24 cores. Same yep. thing. Yep. Meteor Lake has been canceled. Arrow Lake will again be 24 cores, 32 threads, but Arrow Lake will be a new core design with higher instructions per clock cycle. Correct. How much faster? Obviously very much. It A, depends on what you're doing yep. and depends upon things that probably aren't totally set in stone, but are getting real close. Then we have Panther Lake. 40 cores. <laughs> 40 cores. Now, do you notice over here they separate P oh, cores yeah, and E yeah. cores? 832. So 816, 816, 816. They're going to be doubling the E core count to 32. But E cores aren't real cores, people say for some nonsense well, then reason. Well, it better with beast like. We'll get, we'll get there. I'm, 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 I'm giving my speech. I'll give you a speech then. So here's a fun question. What is faster? A Ryzen 7 2700X or eight P cores? Oh, excuse me. Oh, that's a stupid eight question. E eight E cores from these chips. I would think eight E cores.
They don't quite match a 3700X, but they're within 90% of the performance of a 3700X. A 37 or 27? Oh, they beat the 27. Okay, so... They're about 10% slower than a 3700X. Okay. And a 13900K has 16 of them. Panther Lake is supposed to have 32 of them. This will probably... You could disable the P cores on Panther Lake, and you would probably beat a Ryzen 9 5950X with just the E cores on that thing. Wow. Probably comfortably so. So to everybody who goes, E cores aren't real cores, you can shove it. That's nonsense. You're either talking with ignorance, or you're talking with ego, or you're just angry, or I don't know. Because that's that's nonsense. That's not that's not factually correct. The the E cores are weaker than the P cores. But there's more of them. Well, they're not that bad. They're roughly Skylake levels of performance. They're six gen levels of P core performance. But the E cores on Arrow Lake and Panther Lake are not the same as on Raptor. They are getting a core design refresh. Correct. Alder Lake and Raptor are the same type of, they didn't change them. Correct. But on the next gen, they will be faster mm -hmm. cores. But then that brings us down, as you alluded to before, there are two interesting changes with Beast Lake. The first, look at the P core count. 16. 16 P cores, for all of you E core haters out there, and 64 E cores. Now, how they're going to do this without a power envelope that makes sense is beyond me. Somebody in chat commented, are they going to three nanometer for this? They probably have to. I can't imagine doing this on anything less and having it not be 8,000 watts of electricity. 80 cores, 96 threads, 16P and 64 E cores on a new socket with a wow. new micro architecture on both the P and the E cores. Wow. That's why it's called Beast Like. In three years. Yep. Two I don't half. know. That seems like a stretch. Two and a half, really. Yeah. Uh, well, no, it'll be October of 2026. Oh, okay. so, we'll so three years and three months. Mm -hmm. If it's true, that's a lot. I would not be surprised. <laughs> Shane, imagine what happens when Intel moves from lakes to oceans. <laughs> okay, that's funny. That's that's funny. Um, not for computer chess. Mama Mom says, can those people even define what an e-core is? Probably not. Yeah. It's... It's complicated. Mm. Um, will Beast Lake really be 16 slash 64, 80 cores, 96 threads? I, I don't know. Or it might get delayed. I mean, process technology, manufacturing, development, design, three years out, still a long time for a CPU. It is this could get pushed back. This could be delayed. This could be cut back. Maybe they, maybe it's fewer E cores. Maybe it's, but wow. I mean, it's it's sort of like Intel went, oh, mm. you all made fun of us for not advancing core counts for years. Hold my beer. Everyone. They can do it, but it just depends on how much money Intel is willing to throw at a solution. Well, Intel's checkbook is pretty deep. Intel's manufacturing facilities are pretty deep. Mm -hmm. And their ability to get companies to move is serious so what do you say when people say stuff like equals or like threads they're not they're real cores they're, they're in fact there's no hyper threading on e cores every e core is a separate individual execution core now they are cut back in some ways they are missing a couple of features that the main cores have they are very efficient in some tasks and less efficient in others uh -huh. they don't have hyper threading yep they, they're an interesting idea in efficiency where the idea is if we make them more like 
It's sort of like somebody glued a bunch of x86 compatible ARM chips onto your Intel x86-64 CPU. Some people don't think they're real cores because there are some specific instructions they're missing and some advanced features they're missing. So they're not actually identical cores to the P cores, just weaker. Mm -hmm. However, they are less used functions. They can always emulate them in software. I mean, they can, they can do it the brute force method. So there's certain very specific tasks that E cores wouldn't do very well. But Microsoft has obviously been working with Intel to get the scheduler to know where to put things. Right. And of course, over time, software developers start to learn what should be on P cores and what should be on E cores. So it gets better with time. It's kind of like how the FX chip had eight integer units, but only four floating point units. So it was four full cores and four cut cores. It wasn't really an eight core. The FX8100, FX8300 weren't really eight core chips, but they were kind of eight core chips. And they were, it was four complete full feature set cores and then four cut cores. Four it's kind of like this. Yeah. The problem is FX never broke 5% market share. Mm. So it never had enough interest. Software never got developed for it. If software had been optimized and written for it, if the whole industry had moved to it, they would have done better. Now, they were actually kind of garbage independently. I mean, their overall performance was pretty bad. It was a good idea, but honestly, the predecessor to FX, which was the Phenom chips, the Phenom 2s mm -hmm. are in many ways faster than the FX chips, except not now because they're now missing so many key instructions that are not really functional in modern software. But at the time, there were many benchmarks where the newly released FX chip lost to the previous gen Phenom. Your new chip should not lose to your no, predecessor chip. It if it does, that's really embarrassing. It is. And Dr. Lisa Sue in 2014 gave an interview where she said, we're basically stuck with FX now. We know it's not what we wanted it to be. We're doing our best. We'll have a refresh on it soon. Yep. But we're developing the next generation of chip to replace it. We'll have better stuff coming. But once it was really, they were kind of married to it at that point. There's nothing they could do. No. But it never broke 5% market share. But eCores is all the market share. Intel between laptops, desktops, and servers, the industry is moving to hybrid because they're all hybrid. Yep. My new laptop at the office is a hybrid system. Mm -hmm. They're all becoming big little. So it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Next article. Next article is leaked benchmarks reveal major performance leaps for Intel's 15th gen Arrow Lake chips. The iGPU uplift seems particularly impressive. Looking for a Windows 10 or 11 product key, but you don't want to spend $100 to $200 for it? Our sponsor, URCD Keys, provides discounted Windows keys at amazing prices. $15 for Windows 10 Professional, $21 for Windows 11 Professional, and just $60 for Microsoft Office 2021 Professional Plus. These product keys are the real deal. They activate directly with Microsoft Online, link to your Microsoft account, and they work forever. For Windows, you simply go to Settings, Update and Security, Activation, click Change Product Key, paste the key provided by URCD Keys, and in seconds, you're activated with Microsoft. For Office, go to setup.office.com, sign in with your Microsoft account, paste the product key provided by URCD Keys, and then download Office 2021 Pro Plus directly from Microsoft. Remember to use the discount code TD20 to save 25% off the already deeply discounted prices and support our channel at the same time. We have been using product keys from URCD Keys for almost five years now without any issues and encourage you to do so as well. It would be really cool if we got an APU battle between Intel and AMD uh, to where people started to get options for no graphics cards. Sounds like it's coming. So remember, all the links to these articles are down below. We'll have to test them, of course, but keep in mind 15th gen is just a year away. So... The top-end Intel Arrow Lake CPU seems to pack about a 20% uplift over the 13900K. Conversely, the 14th gen scores are rather disappointing to say the least, being only 1-3% to faster. Again, it's a refresh. 14th gen is just a refresh. If you have 13th gen, there's no point. As for single-core performance, we could expect up to 17% improvement in Arrow Lake chips versus the current Rack for Lakes. Now, 
17 to 20% is typically not worth an upgrade. That, that's the kind of difference that can be measured but isn't always noticed. Mm -hmm. It depends upon how much of a premium demanding user you are. Very, very rarely should you ever make single generation upgrades. A Ryzen 7 2700X to 5700X uh -huh. is a real substantial smack you upside the head with a cold wet fish upgrade. Yep. A 3700X to 5700X is not. No. Now it's a nice upgrade and thanks to the new low prices, you can sell a 3700X for about 100 bucks. Okay. You can buy a 5700X for about 170 dish. Sorry. So for the cost of a really nice dinner, you can. it's a 20% uplift. Only because of the low price, I kind of think everybody on Zen 1 and Zen 2 should upgrade to Zen 3 because the prices have gotten so cheap, why not? But a 12700K owner should not upgrade to a 13700K it's just not interesting. Correct. It's a lot of money for. But a 10700K to a 13700K, oh, and that's really actually three generations, although I don't count Rocket Lake because 11th gen was dumb and stupid and nobody should be buying those. Thirteen, A 12th gen was okay, but a 10700K to a, thir to a 12700K was kind of like, skip that. Pretend 11th didn't exist. So in that regard, 10th to 13th was the upgrade. Yeah. If you have 13, 14 is not an upgrade. 14 doesn't exist because it's just a refresh. Mm -hmm. 15th is really 14th. Correct. They're cheating on that on Intel. Seriously, the, that bond, uh, zonk prize for you. 16th is the upgrade from 13th. Mm -hmm. If you have a 13th gen, wait until 2025 for, for 16th gen. If you have a 12th gen, we gave the advice earlier in the video. Somebody mentioned they had a 12700K. We suggested yeah. maybe a 14900K for their use case. Mm -hmm. 15th gen Arrow Lake is absolutely hard stop the time to upgrade for 10th gen and older. Mm. 6th gen, 7th gen, 8th gen, 9th gen, 10th gen, all of it goes. When when Arrow Lake comes out, that is your time to upgrade. Yeah, yeah, you can keep using an old machine. You decided to go ahead and keep using it because you're happy. Mm -hmm. But at some point, the uplift yeah. is so large. We, we, yeah, at some point we you, we'll, we'll replace that at that point because it's like, you know, come on. You don't notice it day to day, but when we upgrade you from a 10850K well, to a... I notice it when I go to the office and use the 13900K. There's a difference. There, there's a difference, you know. It's not necessarily you have to upgrade right now. No. But an additional 20% faster than that 13900K versus your 10850K at home mm -hmm. is kind of the... That's the upgrade point. Yeah.